Great. All right, welcome everybody to the next installation of the Social Justice Leadership Series um, for spring 2023. My name is Dr. Nicholas Hudson and I serve as the Director of the Office of Student Orientation, Leadership and Engagement. And welcome to um, an event that I think um, is uh, one, not only um, falls great in terms of our calendar, uh, but also a wonderful way for us to expose students um, who may not uh, know a lot about um, different religions and or cultural practices um, as we are um, here in a predominantly Hispanic um, Latino community. And so today's event is Ramadan and Arab um, uh, history uh, and culture and heritage um, as we um, just started um, Ramadan uh, the religious festival last week. And so it aligns along with the calendar. Um, we are very excited um, to not only, I think, um, showcase um, one of the world's largest religions um, uh, to um, a predominantly Christian Catholic community, um, but also um, excited to see some of the unique um, ways that um, this culture and religion are practiced here in um, uh, Laredo specifically. And um, we are excited to have the president of the Islamic Center of Laredo, uh, Dr. Abdul Rahman, um, who was going to take it over really and um, uh, kind of showcase what we have afterwards. We There will be food for those um, that can eat. For those that cannot eat because of Ramadan, there will be to-go boxes um, for you all to take home. Uh, so you can at least try some of Airmark's um, food uh, to, for today. So let's turn it over to Dr. Rahman. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm so happy and, and uh, thankful to be here. First of all, uh, I want to thank God a lot um, for giving me this opportunity to talk about him and his religion today and uh, uh, and, and the rest of uh, people who made it possible for me to be here. So um, before I talk about Ramadan, I would like to talk, talk about and give a foundational information about Islam. Because you may not understand all that if you don't understand Islam. Right? So it is only logical for me to talk about Islam and then talk about Ramadan and the activities and uh, what it all entails. Mm -hmm. So, um, God. God is a creator. And um, he created uh, all of his creation. And God in his divine wisdom um, let his, his action, uh, uh, let his uh, plan be known to his creation, making messengers first. Um, we are all humans. We all uh, came from Adam, right? So, um, think. Oh, okay. so. Uh, we we all are, are humans and we came from Adam. Oh, what are you? So, uh, but Islam brings clarification. Islam is a religion. It brings clarification and uh, is going to turn us towards the uh, original concept of God, right? Original concept of God. And it will connect us to God and um, get us more closer to God. So, Islam is a religion that clarifies our relationship with God so that we can succeed. We can succeed and do what we have been um, created to do. Right? In a minute, we'll talk about what that is. Um, but we're all brothers in humanity. We come from Adam. Right? And um, we're Islam and Muslims are not trying to say there is no God. We're not trying to deny God or his books or his angels or his messenger. Right? But Islam is here to clarify our relationship with God. Right? And the concept of God. Um, Allah is very important. Okay? So if you hear me say Allah, um, I'm actually saying that. Okay. So um, who is Allah? Who is God? 
God is a creator. He is a creator. He is not created. He is a sustainer. He is not a thing. He has some divine characters. He has some divine people that do not exist in his creation. Right? So he is the one and the only. Right? So his his attributes are divine. They are the epitome or ultimate of his characters. And that doesn't exist in his creations. So we should not make the mistake of thinking uh, that God exists in some other some other thing or someone else. That is never the case. God is alone, as they, as they say in, in, in you know in Arabic, Rahid is he is alone. Um, he is the one and the only. He is perfect in every aspect, <clears throat> unlike us. A lot of the creations are not perfect, except for angels. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, God is far exalted above his creation. And it is not proper, and we should never um, manifest him or make him manifest into us, into his creation. Because God has the most exalted position, right? Um, he created angels, and angels are perfect. They are programmed to do God's work. Uh, they never falter. He created uh, the devil, the shaitan, right? And shaitan was elevated to worship uh, Allah or God, but he's not in. Okay? So, um, God created, God has angels and he created the devil. Uh, he has his divine plans. And in his divine plan, um, he created his natural, his signature. And do you know what that, that signature creation is? We are the signature. He created us. In his divine wisdom. So he created Adam from clay and uh, Eve from the rib of Adam. And that is mentioned in, in the Bible. Also. I know very well because for 10 years I went to a camp from first grade. I learned a lot, a lot about Christianity. <clears throat> um, um, I grew up with Catholics and Catholics. My teachers were nuns and my principal were nuns. So, and my school was inside the church. Ironically, at home, my grandpa, with whom I lived with, was the imam of the biggest masjid uh, in South Africa. So every Friday, there would be about 15,000. He was a scholar, um, but he had no trouble sending me to a school like that. I grew up with Hindus around here and Sikhs. And when I went to college, uh, I became friends with you. The more I learn about other religions, the more I understand. The more my faith in Allah um, solidified. So, um, it is, so that is what Islam does. It tries to connect you closer to your faith, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, so. Um, Adam was created um, as the uh, as a God's signature creation. And uh, obviously, we all know from the Bible what happened, uh, the story, the sin of the for forbidden fruit, right? So, once that incident took place, God sent Adam and Eve from heaven, from Jannah, to earth. Obviously, not as a condition. You know, it was not a condition, but it was the divine plan of Allah SWT or God. So it was his divine plan to send Adam and Eve to, to Earth. And Earth is in training ground. Obviously, remember, God created human beings as his signature creation. He gave us the ability of thought, of intellect, of freedom that other creations don't have. Angels didn't have that. Right? So angels don't have that ability that humans have. And we're not perfect. God didn't create us perfect. He gave us the ability to do sin, to make sin. So we're not perfect. How can we be in heaven? Think about it. We can be 
So he has to get us out of there so that he can send us to a place where we can perfect ourselves. And then as a reward, we are sent. Make sense? Um, and that's what happened. In his divine wisdom, he sent us to this training ground, gave us the short life, and gave a purpose. I'm going to talk about the purpose of, of, of him. While we are here, and what is the purpose of being here for a short period of time? Because we all will be doing right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this life, this um, uh, temporary stop, okay? so that we can attain what we are destined to okay? what we are destined to attain. So that brings me to purpose of life, as I mentioned. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not um, create humans for no reason. No. There is, a, there is a reason, there is a purpose behind this creation. And we are the signature creation. But we are the owners of our own destiny. Right? So what is the purpose of what is the purpose of life? The perfect purpose of life is you know where you're coming from and you know where you're going. Where, what is your destination and where did you want to be? And that should be your purpose. The worship of the Almighty. Right? So the purpose of our life is the worship of the Almighty. Fulfill our responsibilities. Do what we have to do to get to our destination. To get to paradise. To get to where you came from. That is our destiny. So that's what we want to do. That is our, our goal in this life, in this short life that is given to us. So we have to fulfill our obligation. How do we do that? We worship God that created us. We worship him um, to the best of our ability. And then we fulfill all the other responsibilities that come from that. Right? And so it is very important for us to not lose sight of where we are coming from and where we are going and how we're going to go through the journey. Obviously, mistakes will be made. God, otherwise, we would not be here. As signature creation of God, if we did not have that ability to sin, we wouldn't be here. We would be in, in heaven. Right? So we are going to sin. So Allah is going God will forgive our sin. Right? If we are steadfast in this question. Right? And we focus on our destination. People, uh, we as humans, if we do not uh, forget our destination, uh, more than likely we will be on the same. It's when we forget our destination that we can deviate, that we get deviated from our path. So um, we have to fulfill our duty to God. Otherwise, will be in Romans. Okay? And in, in a minute, I'll talk about that room that may uh, be possible, that our logical mind can see all of that. Right? Like they say, we can smell it. So I'll talk about that. But, so, Adam and Eve end up here. And we are here. And since Adam and Eve, since the beginning of humanity, um, we need to join them. Okay, we're here. What do we do? How do we pray? How do we live our life? How do we get back to paradise? You know, how do we get back to where we came from? I mean, it's not like Adam and Eve did not see Jannah. They were in Jannah. And they were now in a place on earth, right? And it's like, then how do I get there? How do we get back to them? And Allah SWT told them, this is your temporary abode. Right? Live your life. And do what you're supposed to do, what you were doing up there, and do it here, and they'll get there. So, but how? Where is the guidance? So, since time immemorial, people have been asking for guidance. Obviously, guidance are given, right? But is it a definite thing that people will accept, hold on to the guidance? and live by the guidance until they are 100% successful? No, that's the nature of the creation. 
So, therefore, the guidance was provided. Adam al prayed to God. Yes, yeah, Ya Allah, give me guidance. Then everything, everybody that followed after him kept on praying to God. Why? Because obviously, we as humans, we make mistakes, we deviate, we change that guidance to suit our needs and our desires, right? So, therefore, there is a need for constant guidance as humans multiply um, and, 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 and we procreate it and we get bigger and bigger, larger and larger in numbers. You know, obviously, we all have our needs, our capabilities and capacity. And some of us, uh, some of the humans, you know, were steadfast, did what they're supposed to do. Some of them got deviated, corrupted, and uh, uh, went the other way. So, people frequently in human history have come and asked for guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never turns his back. He constantly gave them guidance. Right? He constantly gave them guidance. So, Quran is one such guidance. It is the last of the God's revelations, right? And it is, uh, it supersedes all the previous revelations, right? So whatever is left of them. So there are some uh, guidances that are provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, hum to humans throughout its history. And some of, us, some of them we know, the quotes of Abraham, right? Uh, this, uh, the Gospel of Jesus, right? Or the Psalms of David, or the Torah of Moses, and then finally the glorious Quran uh, that was revealed to Paul. Uh, peace be upon him. So, uh, Muslims believe in all the prophets that preceded uh, and sent by uh, God to us um, as messengers. Um, some of them were given the books, some of them were given uh, messaging. That is different than books, um, but they all preach the same thing. You know, they they were concerned about the human kind. They're concerned about um, our success, and uh, and they were they did the work a lot. They did the work of God. Um, so uh, these we we believe in all these messengers that came before Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We do not. Uh, associate them with any major sins or crimes. These prophets have lofty positions um, in our faith, right? But guess what? Yes, they have a lofty place in our in our hearts, uh, in, in our faith, but they are not any gods and they are not prophets. Okay? Even prophets of Allah, the last prophet of Allah, the last prophet of God, right? Um, that is followed by 1.4 billion people, that is 26% of world population, right? Um, prophet is not associated with God. He's not a demigod. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't possess the godly um, attributes, right? He's the messenger. And Allah SWT in Holy Quran says many times, you are just a messenger. You are just a messenger. So we do not associate anything or anyone with God. With God. So, um, this, and similarly, obviously, Jesus Christ um, is a prophet in Islam. Uh, we accept Jesus Christ as a, as a prophet who had a miraculous birth, right? Uh, of birth from uh, Virgin Mary, right? And to him was revealed uh, the gospel, right? And he did the work of God. And we consider, uh, or Islam considers uh, Jesus as the um, the servant of God, right? The servant of God, but not what Christians mean for him to be the son of God. Okay, that is the difference. So somebody asked me, what is the difference between all these religions that I know and that I'm aware of? Um, I say of all the religions, you know, there's, um, especially Abrahamic religions, there's a lot of commonality, um, but there are some differences. The fundamental difference between Christianity and Islam is how Jesus Christ is. Okay. But other than that, a lot of commonality exists between um, Islam and Christianity. 
and Judaism. So, um, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, peace be upon him, is the last prophet of God. Okay? And that scares me. That is scary. God, think about it. God has sent messengers, guided since Adam, and concluded with so it makes you think if there shall not be any guidance, what is the future of humanity? This is it. This is it. And we see where the world is going. In our life, in our parents' life, grand grandparents' life. Since then, you know, those of us, you know, who, who were born in the 60s and 70s, the world is different now. And you ask your parents and grandparents how the world was and how the world is now. And you can smell where the world is heading, where we're going. Now it makes sense why Prophet Sallallahu is the last prophet of Allah. Why Quran is the last revelation. Because we know where we're heading. You know, it's right in front of our eyes. The world is in front of us. And in our lifetime, we've seen it headed from where? So it makes sense. It really makes sense. And so it scares me. Um, and it should scare all of us. Right? So Allah said through Prophet Sallallahu in his last speech, Prophet Sallallahu said, I have fulfilled my business. I have um, I have uh, delivered them. Now it's all of you. So Quran is the holy book, the last revelation. Uh, the, the religion of Islam is based on five pillars. Okay. Um, they're not abstract pillars, okay? Um, they are pillars of faith. They, they are pillars of faith, and they are also the foundation of faith. Not just pillars of faith, but the foundation of faith. And of course, Ramadan is one of the pillars. In this pillars of faith, there are four obligatory and mandatory pillars. And the last one, which is the Hajj or the pilgrimage, is if you can afford it, if you are able to do it, you can go to the pilgrimage. But the other four, you can get away from. Right? So, Shahada means testifying that there's only one God, there's no other God. Okay? And prayer, five, turning five times a day, obligatory mandatory. All right? And the third thing, compulsory giving. Compulsory giving. Every Muslim is required to give. Right? And then uh, observing the holy month of Ramadan. And then we have the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Sunnah means um, the teachings, the sayings, the example of our prophet, the last prophet of Allah. Why? Why Sunnah of Rasulullah is very critical and important is because Rasulullah Sunnah is the practical practice the practical aspect of Islam. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa peace be upon him showed us how to put the rule book into practice. He practiced, he showed it, he modeled it. Right? Not just say, well here's the Quran, read it and follow it. No, his life was the model. Right? How to put Quran into practice. So he practiced it, he showed us, he demonstrated us out. That's what scares me too. There has been a revelation, a book, a religion, and a model. Now we have no excuse. And we will be asked on the day of judgment. Allah is when God is going to say, I send you these messages. I send you these books. I even have them model it for you. What do you do? So now the religion is, and one of the pillars of religion is um, Ramadan, the holiest month in Islam. And, um, and it is a pillar of Islam, a very big pillar, an important pillar of Islam. Um, Ramadan and fasting, Allah says in the Holy Quran, chapter 2, 183 verse. 
that fasting has been prescribed to you as it has been prescribed to people before you so that you can ward off evil. So practice of Ramadan and fasting is extremely important. And fasting, what, what is the what is fasting? Fasting increases our goodness. Fasting elevates our consciousness. It makes it more sensitive to the consciousness of Allah, to, to feel a lot closer to you. It also gives us the ability uh, to cultivate our nature as humans. As brothers, it, uh, it enhances our brotherly feeling, right? And it it becomes it makes it makes us more conscious to the feeling of brother, brotherhood among um, all races, all humanity. And most of all, it shows us the responsibility that we have towards them and all of us being. And fasting, my dear friends, right, is all about um, devotion, self-control, and it is it definitely puts uh, puts you in it, it 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 makes you in comfort with us. I'll tell you how fasting we don't eat all day long, we don't eat drink all day long. Right? But if you're rich, you have money, you have plenty of food any time of the day or night. You can eat at any time day or night. But all that and fasting puts you with that person who's rich, who's well blessed, who has food at any time, the best food on earth. Right? So fasting helps or, or it's that person uh, of faith into um, that of thirst and hunger. So we can feel that person what others are feeling for less fortunate like that. Right? So for example, you know, um soccer players, or you could be an international soccer player. You're Muslim, you're fasting, the game is in the morning, afternoon, or evening, you fast. While fasting, you can't eat, drink. You could be thirsty, 90 minutes, you're running about what, seven to ten miles during the game, so in 90 minutes, can't eat or drink. So it puts people, uh, or it, 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 it makes an encounter difficult and overcome those difficulties, right? So ultimately it helps us. Um, so, you know, Premier League is not an easy week for them, right, for 90 minutes. But when you're fasting, play that 90 minutes, you, you haven't eaten or drank the whole day, right? And they are making millions. Right? Doesn't matter. You have to so you have to encounter that difficulty, you have to overcome that difficulty. Obviously, uh, we as um fasting people, um, we can't run away from this. I can't say, you know what? Um, I'm going to um, take a month off from my job to observe Ramadan fast. No. You know, I could be a laborer, I could be working out in the streets, uh, construction worker. We have to fast. And on top of that, we have to fulfill our responsibility that we have. We have to do our job. So it does allow us to encounter difficulty uh, that perhaps maybe others are going. It makes us more sensitive to others. So um, Ramadan is not just about not drinking or eating, but it's not. It's not that. Um, if we think Ramadan and fasting is all about eating and drinking, then we're mistaken. It's a lot more than that. It's a spiritual exercise, a religious exercise. Ramadan is a month of the boot that uh, I, I equate it to a boot camp. Um, or this intensive course that we have to take yearly uh, in, the, in the continuing education as a faith. Right? It is a continuing education. So it helps us um, with physical and spiritual hygiene. You know, allows us that opportunity to cleanse our mistakes, cleanse our sins, move forward, be turn a new leaf. Um, so every year you get this. So it's an excellent, excellent opportunity. It is the best part of, of the year for Um Ramadan, uh, we, we also um, celebrate Ramadan. We celebrate, uh, as we're celebrating Ramadan, we also celebrate 
the revelation of the month because Ramadan is considered the, the month of the Quran. The month of the Quran. And in this month, the Quran was revealed as Prophet. So it is an important month in that aspect also. And Quran is our guide. Quran is our role. Model. We follow the Quran to be successful, to reach our destiny. Right? And this is the month of the Quran. And as you can see, fasting uh, in the month of Ramadan is one of the pillars. Now, I just want to, before I move forward, I want to say that, you know, fasting is not just prescribed in Ramadan only. It is also recommended to fast throughout the year, after certain days. So some Muslims do fast on certain days also. Okay, but in Ramadan, you are obligated to struggle to fast. You cannot get away. And uh, there's a hadith that says if anyone misses one day of fast, it's as if um, you have, oh, if you miss one day of uh, fasting in Ramadan, you will never make it up even if you fast your whole month. That's it. That's how important fasting is. We never have any mistake. But obviously, if you have, uh, when you're sick, you're exam, you know, there are some exemptions. Exceptions and exemptions, okay? So if you qualify for those exemptions, you are already. You can look it up. Uh, you can give some of our charity in view of not passing because of side okay? Valid me. So, um, obviously, uh, as, as I mentioned, there are 1.6 billion people. Um, so, twenty-six percent. What does it mean? It means that um, there's one in every four um, people who are Muslims in the country, right? So, one in at least one in four is. Muslim. Um. So, uh, Muslims are spread throughout the world. The uh, Muslims are not concentrated in one location and one area, right? And we are we are as diversified as the rest of the world is. Um, Twenty percent of Muslims are Arab, uh, live in Arab lands. Eighty percent live somewhere. Else. So culturally, we're very diverse. So when a fast is broken uh, at the end of the, the day, you know people in, from different countries and cultures break it differently. Obviously, you know we follow the prophets of Allah's example by eating a date, a three dates, right? But you know, some some are, some people have food, some people have this, some people have that. You know, so we all and, and also you know drinking drink. You know, some people have water only, some people have uh, juice that is kind of uh, native to their land. And stuff. So everybody brings fat, but some of us do it based on where we're at, right? Um, so we are very diverse people. We gather in mosques during the daytime, reciting the Holy Quran during Ramadan. Um, we recite, um, and we also ponder upon its meaning and uh, try to understand it. Uh, and at night, we all break fast together in as a community. Um, we uh, pray in congregation together at night. Uh, we have a number prayer for Arabi during Ramadan that we love listening to. And so a lot of our time is spent, uh, day and night, is spent besides doing our responsibilities, the worldly responsibilities, uh, we dedicated to, uh, to the Lord and uh, listening to his Quran, to listening to scholars. And, uh, you know, getting that message repeated, we know a lot, but we love listening to over and over because all of us need to remind. All of us need to And that's what we do. So the activities, what do what do what, what what do these activities do for us? Do for Muslims, and what is supposed to do? Ideally, these activities, these social, spiritual, religious activities during Ramadan, as well as outside Ramadan, is supposed to make us sociable, adaptive, practical, right, and become the complete human being, right. Um, and get closer to God, the Creator, and then achieve the ultimate. 
achieve the ultimate success. Ultimate success is not money, it's not job, it's not this, and that ultimate success is to get to where we are. If we get preoccupied in other things, we don't get to where we want, that will be a challenge, isn't it? Yes. So Ramadan, Ramadan's activities, its cultural activities, um, is geared towards pleasing the Lord. Pleasing the Lord. So may he be pleased with all of our activities, all of our acts. And and and, and remember one thing, Ramadan has is a two-pronged worship. It has two sides. One to please Allah and one uh, to be good in the world, to be sensitive to human time, to establish a good society. To and in Ramadan, you're not supposed to not just not eat and drink, but also not say obscenities. In fact, it is recommended in Ramadan, you're not even supposed to get angry. You know, don't come and slap me, but <laughs> to say, right? But you will not find me angry. That's all I'm trying to say. So you're not supposed to have emotional um uh, you know state right higher or lower you're supposed to be centered on it. so our life should be centered in life. it's a time to be centered it's a time to be balanced you can't have extreme things or not so no matter what problems you're encountering in Ramadan is a time to be centered to be focused on the Lord Focus on his uh, message, right? And try as much as possible to succeed. And this opportunity is given to us every single year. So, so um, any questions? I would like to take the questions. And uh, if anybody wants to um, answer the question, they'll be more than welcome to do so. So at this point, if you have any questions for me, uh, and uh, Dr. Khalid and Abu is here, he will answer your questions also. He will take the questions. So go ahead and ask away. Oh, we got any questions. This is not a motion. Okay, we have one. Here it is. Can you verify on the Okay. So, um, heaven is the adult where things are perfect, uh, and the concept of heaven is abstract, because we really don't understand, uh, because only Allah understands and knows in his wisdom uh, what heaven is. But so Allah tries to explain to us in many different places in the Holy Book, and also through the prophet. How the heaven might look like. For example, living in Laredo, what is heaven? What we, what makes us happy? Rain. Rain. God, excellent. So the concept of heaven is articulated by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Lord, depending on you know what we understand, our intellect and our understanding. So He understands cool water. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, God says. In heaven, you will find If you're living in a desert, you can't find water, right? You, uh, and, and you say, wow, it really motivates you, right? So the concept of heaven is described in different ways, right? And also, um, you know, our desires. Allah knows our desires. And He's targeting those desires. He says, okay, if you do good, you succeed, you go to heaven, you will find this in heaven. You know? So heaven, you come to do first. And so there are many dimensions of heaven that is described uh, in the Holy Quran um, based on what Allah knows about our understanding, our intelligence. So that we can motivate, get motivated um, to, to be the best human being that can be. Right? So, um, when you go to heaven, it's like uh, Dr. Muhammad said this, and I find this different, right? So, but it, it could be very different from uh, what I will tell you and what you will know. 
but uh, but the, the the bottom line is that it is based on you know um, it is based on um, what will motivate us to do the right thing. Does that answer your question? It does. Yes. Excellent. I have to add like small thing to that. Um, could you imagine ten years ago the capability that we have nowadays with these computers and phones? Would you even imagine 10, 20 years ago to see this other movie? So we have a short statement from what is said by the prophet that the fact that heaven is a place that was never even imagined by any person. So with all our capability of imagination and development, what we see nowadays is the way where we meet. It's where you know reach first and look wherever it is. Any other questions? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, we are predestined, right? We are predestined. Uh, all of us are here because we were supposed to be born, right? Uh, we are predestined, but there is a certain degree of freedom that we do have to affect that destiny. You get me? So as I mentioned in my talk, the reason we are here on earth is because of that feature, the characteristic that um, God gave us, right? To affect our destiny. Yeah, we are predestined, right? But we also have a certain degree of freedom and we will be asked about that freedom. And the decisions that we uh, take and the choices that we make. So, if we have that ability, the power to change that destiny, either it's uh, from good to bad, from bad to good. Anybody else? Don't ask a question. Uh, hey. Um, I apologize first of all if I come to a wrong place. I'm a Christian, um, but I'm always very curious about religion. And just now you mentioned to me the difference between Christian and Muslim and Muslim is how we see Jesus Christ. So I'm um, thinking if I go a little bit more explanation, I'm, I'm out of curiosity. Sure. Uh, sure, sure. In, in the time of Prophet Salah, uh, uh, there was a, a group that went uh, for protection to Ethiopia, you know, Ethiopia, right, in Africa. So uh, they went to a, 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 a Christian kingdom, a Christian land with a Christian king, seeking for protection. And uh, there were enemies of that group that were coming behind them, and then they finally caught up, and then uh, they presented themselves. Um, in front of the Christian king. And um, so the Christian king asked uh, the group, the, the Muslim group uh, that was sent by the Prophet um, for, for seeking protection. Why are you here? They say, we're here for uh, for your protection because you know we are being persecuted and prosecuted in Mecca. So we are here to seek your protection. And then the Meccans that were there, they said, no, you cannot, they told the, the king, you cannot give them protection because they are from a different religion. They, they teach different things. So the king said, oh, then the king turned to the, the Muslims and said, okay, what do you have to say about that? What do you say, what do you have to say about uh, Jesus Christ? So the, the, the Muslims said, yes, so we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in his miraculous breath, I mean, birth. We believe he possessed uh, the capability to perform miracles. He, he was a messenger, he was a prophet, and so on and so forth. Right? When Prophet uh, Muhammad taught them about Jesus Christ, they said all of that. You know what the king said? The king said the difference between Christians and Muslims, and he drew with his staff a line. He said, the difference is between a Christian and Muslim. Is the difference is as thin as it is. So there is a lot of commonality between them. There are some fundamental differences, right? Um, and uh, but however, 
you know, we do consider the strikes of Um, we do believe in his miracle. In fact, um, an entire chapter in the Holy Book of uh, uh, Quran is dedicated to, to uh, Mary, right? Um, uh, the uh, and just like you mentioned, uh, more in the Holy Quran than Prophet Muhammad. But we believe that Jesus was created the same way as Adam was created. So he was created for Holy Mother, which is, you know, it's logic for us is Adam was created from, from no father in the And same thing. We believe this how he was created, and with his, all, all of his miracles, there was a prophet in the world. This is the big difference between us and Christianity. All Muslims believe in Christianity and in Jesus as a prophet and a messenger. This is so really the state of the world. Yeah. That's funny. Don't get angry. No, no. Um, see, the thing is that looks don't matter. And that's why you will not see any depiction of uh, the prophet. Or in, so in Islam, there is no depiction of any prophet. Um, we don't like to frame, you know, um, prophets uh, and God uh, in a certain way. No. Um, so it, it really, we have no, um, we have no notion of how these sprites look like, what his hair like, all blonde or a black, or brown, his eyes or color. No, it, it's not important. What is important is to teach. And then we don't have uh, pictures, we don't have uh, statues, we don't have sculptures of even our own prophets. And our, uh, if we are forbidden from having any pictures or even drawings of the prophet for that reason. Yeah, the prophet once said that God would want to throw chairs in the faces of his look at two of Oh yeah, our our um, Islamic center, the masjid or the mosque, is open to everyone. Um, it's located on six hundred four on Star Drive. You can Google it, and uh, it, it's open on certain times for prayers. And you are welcome to you can call that number, and I will answer that phone, right? And um, I'll tell you when to come by uh, on Fridays uh, at uh, one fifty one five zero in the afternoon for prayer. Um, anybody's welcome. The doors are always open. Anybody's welcome to see, observe, experience, know, uh, call me or come by. Questions. Um, our doors are always open. I have some uh, the Quran in Spanish. So those of you who um, like to read in Spanish, I have some Spanish um, translated Quran. Um, I have English and I have Arabic. So you can come by. Yeah, I'm going to start every Friday. Saturday, 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 we have skaters. Um, also, you can come and enjoy the dinner. Um, it's at the Mandir, it's so far on the drive. Uh, so if you come by at 8 o'clock, uh, you're welcome at 8 o'clock in the evening, and there's, you can enjoy the food um, from different parts of the world. In our community here in Laredo, um, we have Muslims from different places, uh, from Middle East, from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, um, and Africa, North Africa. So. Um, and Turkey, so we have different foods because uh, people sponsor dinners uh, on different Fridays and Saturday. I mean, Saturday and Sunday. So, so Saturday and Sunday, you can come by during the weekend at eight o'clock, eight p.m. and uh, you can have a meal with us. No question. About it. Just to warn you that whenever the Indian brother is cooked, it might be too spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so bring your pepper. <laughs> <laughs> No, this time, this time I made sure that it was spicy, right? This that's part that's how I you know. So. <laughs> um so if no more questions, there's food there, you are more <laughs> is that food like uh, uh yeah it's a, it's a so I will explain a little sure. bit about the food here in a second, but um if we could first um give a, a warm uh thank you to uh Dr. Rahman uh for Helping us learn a little bit more about Ramadan um, as well as Islam. So thank you very much.
for the students that are here, if you're looking for credits, you need to make sure you're signing in. Um, the food that we have here for those that want to be able to, to try some now, we have uh, uh, more Middle Eastern um, food um, in the palette that uh, Aramark can make. So there's no guarantees on how good it is, but uh, <laughs> but it is their attempt at um, uh, sh uh, shawarma and uh, ch so chicken shawarma uh, and jada, um, uh, tabouye salad, as well as baklava um, and banana. Um, so a, a, a drink there for them as well. So um, it's a little bit more, um, we don't have Middle Eastern restaurants here. So I'm mm -hmm. like, let's try to bring a little bit yeah. food here. Uh, but San Antonio has a great community. So if you ever get to go up to San Antonio to try Middle Eastern food, there's um, wonderful uh, locations up there. Um, and tons of, um, I can say tons, but like three or four or five different restaurants right next to each other, as well as uh, grocery stores. And that nature. But um, for that, that's um, food that's over here. I do want to we have three more of these left this semester, so I always love to plug these up. Our next one is going to be uh, the Sangkran celebration, Thai New Year. And so we're going to have a conversation with students that are from Thailand and, and learning more about Thai uh, culture as well as Thai food, right? So there's always some kind of great food with that. Uh, that is going to be on April 12th. On April 19th, we will be having a conversation on autism. Um, and so we like to have a cultural celebration and then a conscious coffee hour um, where it's food as well. But um, but we'll have a conversation about autism awareness with our Office of uh, Disability Services. And then on May 1st, we're going to talk about um, Native Hawaiians and issues um, facing the Native Hawaiian um, population, um, as well as uh, uh, Hawaiian dishes to be fair. So, um, we're trying to broaden our horizons. That is the remainder part of the social justice leadership series. For those of you who are RSVP for the event today, you will also be eligible to receive a $10 earmark food voucher. You just have to come on two days from today, so Friday, to pick it up in the sole office, and it will be eligible to be picked up any later. So once again, thank you all for coming, and feel free to help yourself, and feel free to take food if you'd like to. Um, there are to-go containers as well. Thank you.